stand and worship with us. Now put your hands together. To bear it alone 
church, and it's a song of how we are filled with faith when we come into the presence of God, whether you're online or whether you're in the room today. But here's what I know. I know that it's hard to have miracle, uh, miracle faith sometimes. I know that it's hard because, come on, somebody's hearing stories this morning because your power went out in the middle of a heat wave. And Come on, sometimes it just feels like, okay, everything's working against me, and so how am I going to have some miracle faith today? But I love what Paul said to the Galatians because he understood that we could get there from time to time. And so he said, well, let me ask you again. You're going to need this reminder. What is the lavish supply of God's Holy Spirit in your life and the miracles of God's tremendous power have to do with you? Keeping religious law. No, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon us in this room, in your room. Why? Through the revelation and power of faith. And so, God, we just lift up faith in this room. If you don't have, just elevate your faith from where it is to another level. God, we believe that today is a miracle day in the house of God. If you need a miracle, just reach out your hand and say, God, today I'm believing for a miracle. Lord, this is a house of miracles. You've done it before. You'll do it again. And I'm believing today is a miracle day in sick bodies, in relationships that need mending, in our emotions, in our spirit, in the spiritual battle, in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Resonate Church. This is a house of miracles. Come on, let's continue. in prayer. 
prayer because there is something powerful about speaking out your need and letting somebody come alongside you and join in faith and in prayer. So there is a link in the chats that you can click on. There's a QR code posted behind me and you can just let us know what your need is. And if there is a miracle that you have received in your life, ways that God has already answered prayers, would you let us know? Because we would just love to celebrate with you what God is doing. This is a house of miracles, church. Well, one of the things we're all so passionate about right now is just building up our Resonate Dream Team in this comeback season. If you are not yet a part of the Dream Team that makes all of this happen on a Sunday and all throughout the week, I want to personally invite you today that we would love to have you, that you belong, that there is a place for you, that your gifts are needed. We want to link arms with you in making a difference both here on a Sunday and all throughout the week. And I just think there's something really special about joining a community of like-minded people who are on mission together. Something comes alive in us. And so we want to invite you, come join the team. There is room for you. Again, you can use the QR code behind me or the link in the chats today. Amen. Well, we are starting a brand new summer message series, and I know that it's going to be an impactful word. Are you ready, church? Come on, are you ready? Let's get ready and just open our hearts this morning. A welcome, Pastor Shane, as he comes to bring the word. Come on, who's glad to be in church today? Let me hear where you're at. I'm so glad to be together with you again here on this Sunday. Once again, to everyone joining us online and, and uh, just uh, whether it's in this moment or in the uh, on demand later, I want you to know how, that how much I love you and thinking about you. I see your faces when I pray for our church. Some of y'all I've never met. Um, but I can't wait to see your face. But those of you, I can't wait to see you back in the room. Today, I'm getting to see some faces back in the room again. I got to see Sabrina and Hannah over here. Come on, I just got to see, I got to see Joel and Jackie down here. Just people come back into the room. Alexandra's over here. I'm just so excited to see faces that, I, that are new, faces I haven't seen in a long time. And we thank God for you, church. Honestly, every time we get the chance to do this, whether it's in 40 degrees or in 15 degrees or in 40 below, I honestly don't care. I'm just happy to see you. You know what I'm saying? If I had to do 40 plus without you, I'd be, I'd be miserable. But I get to do 40 plus with you, and I'm thankful for that. It's good to be in the room together. Well, today we are going into a brand new message series called our Summer Series. I got a word I cannot wait to get to you today. But before we do that, can we just celebrate some of the great stuff going on right now as a church? One of the things I love about this time of year is the buildup to Serve Day, that we're serving now as a church more than we ever have before. I love that. I love that when life gets tough, the church shows up. And I'm so proud of you for that. And we are in what we're calling Serve Month. So everyone is invited to serve day. This year it's on Saturday, July the 10th. And we've got so many opportunities for you to serve on that Saturday. We're going to have landscaping opportunities, lots of outdoor stuff. So we're going to be at Wings Ministry, which runs homes for moms and kids coming out of domestic abuse situations. We're going to be there just making the outside of these homes fabulous. Come on, somebody. We're going to be putting in some creative outdoor fun elements. And so you don't even need to necessarily know what that is. You sometimes just got to sign up and show up and someone will have brought some resources and you just bring some manpower or some woman power to the table. And we're going to get some stuff done together. We're going to have teams putting together care packs for homeless, hygiene packs for the 3030 shelter at Gordon Avenue in downtown Coquitlam. We got teams that are going to be putting together thank you packs for the staff at Eagle Ridge Hospital. We got teams doing some fun summer activity packs for the families that we serve through our weekend backpack program. We got so much for you. It's easy to sign up. Head over to weareresonate.ca 
We are resonate. I don't know. So where do you put the emphasis? We are resonate. C, whatever it is. We are resonate. Ca. Hit that serve button. You're going to see the list of projects. You just got to hit join. Let us know who you are, that you're going to be showing up. We'll give you a list of tools and equipment that you might want to bring to that project. And then we will see you there on Saturday, July the 10th. But here's what I want to celebrate is that because our teams always have this fire inside to say, we want to do more. We've already been serving all throughout this month. So our dream team, each of the individual teams on the dream team, are serving in our communities for one week through Serve Month. So this month, or this week, it was our prayer team and our hosts team. And I heard so many great reports of what God has done through the team. I love the random acts of kindness. I saw one picture on social media, free freezies at a park, others buying coffees, others buying meals, others showing up to a local not-for-profit partner of ours that works in mental health and transitional housing for those getting back on their feet. Come on, making meals for uh, that place. I saw others that are just uh, making, again, uh, hygiene packs again this week. Come on, give it up for the ways that we're making a difference. And you know what's really beautiful about serving is that it's, it's a joy to serve. Like, it would, be, it would be worth it if it was just tough. But we were being like Jesus and helping other people. I would, I would do it if it was straight up just tough. But you know when you serve someone what happens you're like, oh, that is, that's good. What you're doing right now, come on, somebody. It's good for us to serve. So one more time, let's give it up for all the ways you're making a difference. It really does matter now more than ever. So here's where we're going today. I'm speaking a message in this summer series. In fact, I want to speak a collection of three talks called Some Good News. Some Good News. There was a YouTuber who had a Some Good News channel early 15 months ago in the pandemic, and you just, somewhere to go and have a good laugh. Well, here's why Some Good News matters right now. Because for 15 months, you've heard me stand up here and talk about perseverance and talk about endurance, and that stuff matters. Because the gospel is about persevering through the tough trials, and about faithfulness no matter the cost, and about serving and getting out of our comfort. That is... The gospel, and, come on, somebody put an and on the end of that, and the gospel is also about our God being a good shepherd, saying that joy is going to be an and on the end of that, and the gospel is also about our God being a good shepherd, saying that joy is going to be your strength, that he has some celebrations for you, he schedules them in the calendar for Israel, he's still got them for us today to put celebration and life and laughter on the calendar. Well, that's where we are for the next three weeks. You ready for a little feast? I believe it's going to be so good. Nobody in the room was ready for a little feast. It's okay. It's been 15 months. I don't blame you. Come on, you ready for a little feast today? In, in the presence of God. I'm so excited for this. Today I want to speak a message to you on the topic of rest. And I want to start with a couple of questions. Do you believe that God desires to give rest? Do you believe that God, this is question number one. Here's the second question. Can you personalize it and say, I believe God desires to give me, individual, me, rest. Do you believe that today? Here's how Jesus answered that question in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He said this, come to me all, all you. He didn't put an exclusion on it. He didn't limit it. He said, come to me, anyone, doesn't matter who you are, get on over here. If what you need is some rest, if you're weary and burdened, here's what I want to give to you. I will give you rest. Lord, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that it's going to impact our hearts. I thank you, Jesus, that in your presence is rest, that in your presence is peace. For a lot of us in the room today and those watching we need you to put those things back into our lives. The devil's stolen them. Life has taken them away. But today we lean in with some faith and expectation that there is rest in the presence of God. Lead us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. If you are the vacation planner in your home, go ahead, raise your hand. You're the fun one. You're the excited one. You're the adventurer. If you're the one, go ahead, raise your hand. There is not a vacation planner in the Turton home. Can somebody help them? Somebody Instagram them, DM them, say, I will help you with your trip. Now I know why you guys don't go away enough. There's no one planning. I'll do it in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Raise your hand if you're the vacation planner. Somebody shoot a hand up. Yes. 
I see some couples with both hands up and you're like, you're going to get in a fight right now. You're like, you are not the fun one. Don't fight. Don't fight. Just stay calm. Stay cool. In our home growing up, my dad was the vacation planner. He was, he was great at it. We didn't have enough money to really have like the all-star vacation. Like we never flew anywhere. I never flew anywhere until I paid for like a high school trip with like bottles. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like, we were that family. I paid for my first flight collecting bottles, somebody. You know what I'm saying? That was our family. But we made the car road trip. See, yeah, somebody said preach in the front row. That's, you were poor too. So all the poor people said preach, preach. <laughs> That's the loudest amen I got today. Some poor people up in here right now. Come on, we need Jesus. All right, so here we are. My family did, did road trips. We just got, my, it was just the car for us. My sister and I in the back seat. My family couldn't even afford a car with a stereo in it. We had to get the D batteries at 7-Eleven on the way out of town, put the ghetto blaster in the back. Every time you turn right or left, it would hit my sister or me. Didn't matter. It was going to hit somebody in the head. That was the road trip. But we had some fun. And the reason we had some fun was that my dad could plan a vacation. He knew what we loved, and he made sure to stop at the places that would bring us enjoyment. Each of us, my sister, myself, my mom. My sister, one year we went from Ontario to the East Coast. I don't think, like, it's so, it's interesting when you go on a vacation, and you don't see any other cars on the road going that way. That was the kind of vacations that we took. We went to the East Coast. I don't think anyone was heading to the Maritimes, but we were heading to the Maritimes. And so we went out PEI and Nova Scotia. If you're watching this from the Maritimes, God bless you. We love you. So there we are. All my friends from the Maritimes now live here. So you know what I'm saying. So now, so we go out to the Maritimes. We go to PEI, and it was the home of Man, I don't know why I still know this. I think it was like Lucy Maud Montgomery. She wrote the Anna Green Gables books that my sister was into. And so my dad was like, let's make sure we stop at her birthplace. You know what I'm saying? There's the house where she was born. Okay, that's the kind of vacations we had. But it was meaningful to Carla because she liked the books. And it was a nice little stop. And for me, I, I, I just ran away in the woods until they found me later. So you know, it was like we would do what was mad. I was into baseball. My dad would take me to baseball game didn't matter major leagues we go see the expos minor leagues we just go ha- whatever it was my dad was going to make sure that we had what was meaningful and important to us and our vacations were going to be I remember the time we ran out of money in New Brunswick I, and I don't know how it happened I got to check in with my dad later today but we, I know somehow that we ran out of money and the reason I know is all of a sudden we were driving home we drove through the night we ate peanuts on the way home the vacation ended quickly but we got home and this is like Here's, what's, here's the point of the story, is that I believe in the next few minutes, my goal is to help you believe and to begin to lean into an understanding that God has a plan of rest for you. That it's not just something that God sort of wants to give to you and maybe just maybe, if you're lucky, you'll find a little bit of it. I believe that there is a path for you this summer that God wants to lay out, and he's already allocated the stops on the way for what your heart needs. He knows what you love. More importantly than that, he knows what you need, and he's got a plan and a path to bring you to rest. Can I get some amens from this 930 service today? And so what I want to do over the next few minutes is I want to go to the Bible and find three elements of God's plan for rest for your summer. Three elements of God's plan for rest. And here's the first one. It's in Psalm 23. Famous psalm written by King David. David had a revelation that God was a giver of rest. And out of that revelation, he writes to us so that we can also have an understanding and get this idea that God has a plan to bring you to rest. And so he writes these famous words. So many of us will know them. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on, what's he do? He's going to make me lie down in green pastures. And so here's the first element of God's plan of rest for you. The first part of God's plan for rest is slowing. He makes me lie down. It's going to take a slowing. Is anybody in an industry right now that's ramping back up really quickly? Anyone that is in an industry where you're saying, I've got to strike with the momentum that's here right now because I haven't had this momentum. We haven't been going. The clients are coming back. All of a sudden, there's this push. We've got to make up ground. We've been behind. And so even though you've had the toughest year of your life and you need rest for your soul more than you've ever needed rest for your soul, you find yourself in a place where it feels like, I just can't rest right now. In Mark's gospel, the sixth chapter, Jesus and his disciples find himself 
in this kind of place. They have been ministering. There's momentum. And they're very busy. If ever there was a time that Jesus would say to his disciples, guys, we can't stop now, this was it. And you can imagine these disciples, these are young guys. They're late teens, early 20s. They've come from obscurity. And now as they're walking down the street, all of a sudden someone is yelling out, Peter! Peter looks and he turns and he sees someone he's never seen before in his life. All of a sudden his life has meaning and his life has significance. People know my name in rooms I walk into. So if there's ever a time where the disciples are going to say, we can't stop now, why would we want to go back to obscurity? Why would we, we don't want to miss this moment. This is it right here. And nevertheless, Jesus says these words to his disciples. Come, we got to take a break. Find a secluded place where you can rest a while. Like your job matters a lot. And we think what we do is important. These guys were changing the trajectory of human history. And even still, Jesus says to them, come on, what you need right now is a slowing. It seems like I can't slow right now because the clients are are walking back in the door and because the jobs are coming back in. And that's a lot better than the feelings of uncertainty I've had for the last year. And yet in this moment, the Lord is calling every single one of us to a slowing It's part of his rest plan for your life. Now, Rachel and I have had to come into this with some intentionality. Because slowing is not my default setting. Come on, where's my like get after it people? Like just, I'm like, I'm hungry for, I wake up hungry for life. So slowing is not my default setting. But Rachel and I have had to work on this. So one of the things we've had to do is we've had to add something to our vacation planning. And it's not something we do on the trip. It's something that we do before the trip. Before the trip, Rach and I have to sit down and ask ourselves a question. What do you need this year to slow? What are you going to need on this trip to be able to slow your heart down? What's going to be good for your heart? What's going to be good for your soul? What's going to be good for your body? And the reason we discovered that we had to ask this question was a few years ago, we got to the end of a vacation. And have you ever seen a family getting on a plane? They've got the Disney shirts on. They've got the Mickey ears on. And they're walking on the plane like they haven't slept in a week. You ever seen that family before? That was us. And they're not on their way to the vacation. The Mickey gear is not like, hey, we're going. No, it's on your way back and you're stepping onto the plane and you're like, I need to get saved because I am so tired right now. This is just like us a number of years ago on vacation. And we told ourselves, hey, we've actually got to plan ahead for a slowing as part of our vacation. This year, we've already had a little bit of that conversation. We sat down together on our front porch and we just said, what do you need to be able to slow. Maybe you need to ask yourself that question right now. In the midst of all that you're going through, in the midst of that moment, you feel like, I can't slow down now, and yet all of us are in this place of so much tension and so much turmoil that God does have a plan for you right now that includes, I promise you, it includes slowing. I love how God himself leads the way in this, Genesis 2, verse 2. It says, God finished his work that he had done and he, come on, say it with me, rested. Well, let's try that again. You gotta help me a little bit on that. God finished his work that he had done and he rested, he slowed. How many are thankful that we serve a God that models slowing? Doesn't feel like what you wanna do, doesn't feel like what's okay to do right now, but it is what we need, it's what you need for your heart. God is a God of slowing. That's the first part of his plan for rest for your life right now. Here's the second thing. God's plan of rest for your life also includes not just slowing. It also includes receiving. Let's look again at that 23rd Psalm as David goes on and writes more for us. Or rather, Matthew, as Jesus says more. We'll come back to 23rd Psalm later. But in Matthew, Jesus, in the same sentence that we read before, I want to put a different emphasis on it this time. You ready? He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will, here's the key word, give you rest. I love the context of these words here in Matthew 11. It would seem that this, these words were spoken by Jesus to maybe his disciples while he pulled them away from a crowd. That's not the case. Picture the scene. Jesus is speaking to a large crowd. 
they've gathered. And the question that they had for Jesus was not, how do we rest? The question that they began with was, who are you? They want to know, how do I know that you are the Messiah and the Savior? How are we going to know? It was John's disciples that came to him while this crowd was around. And they asked him this question. And I want to ask you the question today. What would you say to someone who came to you with a question and said, who's God? Who's Jesus? What does he look like? Hey, the faith journey for me is difficult. I want to know how I can lean in. It seems like there's so many answers and I don't know where to lean and I don't know what God is like and I don't know who he is. And is it Christianity? Is it something else? If someone comes to you and says, hey, how do I know? What answer would you give them? I love that it's at the end of that message that Jesus brings these words. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'm going to give you rest. In other words, part of the way that you're going to know that I'm who I say I am is when you get a glimpse of what rest looks like in my presence. Part of the way you're going to know that I'm who I say I am is when I deliver you from your busyness. Part of the way you're going to know I'm who I say I am is when I bring you on up out of that pace that's been destroying your life. And in my presence, you experience something that you cannot get anywhere else. Come to me because I want to give you something. Rest. I'm so thankful he said, I want to give it to you. It means that in the gospel and in the kingdom of God, rest is not something you earn. Rest is something you receive when you get in proximity to Jesus. So if you need rest from some anxiety right now, you don't need to figure it out on your own. You just need to get close to Jesus. Jesus says, come to me. If you need rest for some weary bones right now, you just need proximity with Jesus. He's a giver. If you're so tired, you don't even know what you need right now. You need proximity to Jesus. So back to the vacation planning for Rachel and I. So we sit down and we have this conversation to say, what do you need to be able to slow and part of that conversation this year was to, and then years gone by, but especially already, we've had this conversation is to say, how are we going to bring proximity to Jesus? Because you know what happens, right, when you plan that vacation? You begin to think, well, we've spent so much to get here. We've got to maximize the time. And all of a sudden, the schedule just fills up. Why? Because, you know, it just costs a lot to be here. We've got to fill it all up. Or how many have had this one? It's like, we know we've got to get to the beach early because parking's going to be a problem. Yesterday, we were driving by a beach. We were driving out by some lakes to try and find some water for the kids. And we see people trying to find parking. They were so desperate for parking. Rachel's like, look, babe, that truck actually is only parked on two wheels. They were so far in the ditch that the car was resting on two wheels. And someone thought like, well, that'll do, and left it behind. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I got to get up early to get parking at the beach. And so what happens on vacation is we don't slow and we don't find ourselves in proximity. And here's what Rachel and I have talked about already for this year. I said to her, hey, babe, like, you know how I love to get up early. I love my time with Jesus in the morning. I love to get up ahead of the kids. And I like to do all that. That's, that's who I am. That's like a foundation of my life. But you also know, right, that like on vacation, I got to sleep in. Come on, right? Where's my vacation sleeper inners? I'm not going to be doing that on vacation. So the problem in the past for us at times has been even I'm now waking up with the kids and I'm trying to have time with Jesus while I'm trying to kick a, a ball. I'm trying to kick the soccer ball as far away. So I got like two minutes before they get back. And I'm like, now, Lord, I just invite you. And then the ball comes back. You know what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden it's harder to do this. So Rachel and I now have had to plan not only where are we going to go, what's the place we're going to be, but how do we allow ourselves to have proximity? Meaning, when I wake up with the kids, we're going to have to set aside some time for her to get proximity with Jesus. Set aside some time for me to get proximity with Jesus. How many know that in, at least in our house, maybe in yours too, proximity with Jesus takes some planning? You know, God's got a rest plan for you. It starts with slowing. And I know it's hard right now, but it's on the agenda. But slowing is not the purpose. We slow for a reason. We slow so that we can receive. There's one more thing I believe God wants to give us on his plan for rest. Here's the third thing. After slowing and after receiving, God gives us number three, future vision. 
future vision. Let's go again to Psalms, Psalm 23. David says this. After he's made me lie down, well, then he's going to lead me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Why? For his namesake. Do you see it? Online, do you see it? What's the purpose of the slowing? What's the purpose of the receiving? So that my eyes can be lifted again and see the path that leads to glory for God through my life. See, one of the reasons, in fact, I believe the most important reason that God leads us to rest, number one, yes, it's because he loves us, but it's also because from that place, when you pause, there's not a lot in this life that causes us to pause, but when you pause, you're able to reflect and say, what am I even here for? And all of a sudden I begin to realize, no, I'm here for his name's sake. That's what really matters in my life. Resonate family, I'm so excited about this season. Every single week as I come into this place and I see more of you and I see what God is doing and I see opening back up, I believe with all my heart that we are stepping into the greatest season that we've ever experienced as a church. I feel that in prayer like I've never felt that in prayer before. I say that with all my heart. And listen, COVID could not, could not take out of this house a revival spirit. Can't take it. Can't. There's some things COVID couldn't get at. Our expectation for what God's going to do in this place is one of those things. Our belief that the best is yet to come. Our faith that God is reaching towards people. I'm talking to people all the time who are even through online just coming to church for the first time and finding Resonate for the first time. And God's moving in their lives. And I'm seeing people that still, in, even in this atmosphere, discover Jesus. But tell me, I'm telling you, on a, it's on another level in the next few months. And so part of the reason that God has rest for you and a slowing and this ability to receive, and in a moment we're going to go back into worship, and I believe God is going to download the beauty of rest in the picture of His presence. But I want us to know why He brings us to that place. It's so that we can have some future expectation and some future vision. Because maybe you'd say COVID did get at some of that for me. And that God had this place in my heart and it's taken away this belief that God's going to use my life and that I'm on mission and it's made me a little more grumpy and it's made me a little more frustrated and it's made me a little more tired. And God's bringing you to a place of restoration today. He's bringing you to his presence so that you get that deep breath. And from that deep breath, you begin to say again, nothing else matters, Jesus, but the glory. I'm singing a message right now. Nothing else matters, Jesus, but the glory of your name. Maybe you haven't made a plan on when you're going to come back to church yet. Can I challenge you today? Can I just pastor you for a moment? It doesn't need to be next week, but you better have a plan. Let's tell you what the devil wants to do. The devil wants to catch you off guard without a plan. If he can keep you without a plan for long enough, he'll just knock you off course. We all just get a little bit weird when we get too far away from one another. It's happened in our lives. Trust me, Rach and I are weirder than the last time you saw us. It's okay, we're all there, but it's time to get over it with a plan. Maybe for you, it's a plan after a second shot. Maybe it's a plan after you see something happen in the world around us. Maybe, but here's the thing, doesn't matter when it is, I'm just calling you Resonate family. As your pastor, you better have a plan for how you walk back into God's plan for your life. In Jesus' name. Now, let's circle back because here's what God wants to do in this place today. God wants you close. He wants to pull you right in here, put an arm around you and say, I got rest for you. It's not something you earn. It's something you receive in my presence. So God, we just slow. We slow. Come on, just slow your heart. I want you to stand with me in the room. Just begin to just, just begin to believe in faith that God's here. God's moving. At home, would you stand with me? In Jesus' name, God's here. God's moving. Moving in my home. Moving in my living room. Moving in my car. God, I just make room for you. You might need to pull the car over right now. God, I make room for you in this moment. I slow it down. It's been hard, but I'm doing it right now. God, I'm slowing it down. Here I am, Jesus. I'm yours. And God, the good shepherd, the loving father, sends the spirit of God right now in this moment. He's looking you square in the eye as a good father. He's saying, come on, look up here. I want to give you rest. I want to give you rest. As the team leads us in this song, would you open up your heart? I believe God wants to deposit 
out of the, the quiet and of the stillness, he wants to give you rest today in Jesus' name. We go again, my mind racing, and I can't seem to end all these crazy thoughts and feelings. It's like it never ends until your voice breaks through my noise. And I know I'm not alone, not alone. Away with the distractions, I want to matter they come from you I'll just be quiet and let you speak through the silence here I am no more hiding you are in this moment I won't fight it I'll be quiet He's a giver, he's a good, good father. Knows what you need and he has a plan to bring it to your life. Brought you to church today because he knew what you needed and he said, come with me. I'm gonna give you some rest, in Jesus' name. I'm amazed that Jesus used rest as a way to illustrate who he was. And so maybe you're in the room or maybe you're watching online right now and you'd say, I'm I'm on that faith journey and I've never surrendered my life wholeheartedly to God. And today the call is not so much a Jesus died on the cross to set you free from your sins, although he did all that. Today the picture that Jesus is giving you is, would you just take another step towards me and let me bring rest to you? It says you step closer to him and you discover why he actually came for you. He loved you so much came from heaven to earth, took on flesh, humble himself, took on death, even death on a cross, so that your past could be wholly forgiven and your future be totally set free and you would have eternal life with Jesus. If today you'd say, I want to receive that miracle of salvation, it'd be my honor to pray with you, lead you in a moment of faith. It's not going to be the things you do that save you. It's going to be a 
faith in your heart in Jesus. And if that's you today, come on, I'm believing it's you. Someone watching online, it's you. Would you pray this prayer with me? Say, dear Jesus, I give you my life today. I've tried without you. It's been exhausting. And I thank you for the promise of rest. So I have believing faith today that you're who you say you are, that you love me, that you came for me, that you died on the cross and you rose again and ascended to heaven so I could be free. And if you can't say all that, just say Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus, my life is yours wholeheartedly. In Jesus' name. Come on, Resonate family. Let's put our hands together for those who just made that prayer of faith. Come on, you can do better than the best we've ever done. God bless you. Well, such a good word. Thank you, Pastor, for that today. Come on, I hope that spoke to someone's heart. You've been running the race. It's been a long time, and you need some rest for your soul. We're praying that as a church for you this week. There will be rest for your soul amidst the chaos amidst your situation that you're walking through, there'll be rest for you this week. If you just prayed that prayer, making a decision to follow Jesus, whether it was your first time today or maybe a recommitment of your life to Christ, we want you to know, church family, whether you're in the room with us here today, whether you're online joining us, we are celebrating with you as a church family. We would love to resource you with some next steps because your next steps in your faith journey, they're simple, but they're important and they matter to us. So this week, we would love for you to jump onto our website. There's a connection card that's available there. You can fill it to let us know that you made that decision today. This week, we would love to send you an email with a message from Pastor Shane. It's a short video with some next steps in your faith journey. Come on. One of those steps is as simple as this. Come on back to church. Find a church in your local area, whether it's Resonate here. Come on, we love what we do here in Coquillam, in the Tri-Cities, in the Lower Mainland. But if you're watching from somewhere else, find a local church in your area that loves people and that loves Jesus. It's also the part of our service where we give you the opportunity to give back to God, where we pause for a moment. We worship God with our giving. You know, when Pastor Shane and Rachel planted Resonate Church, when my wife and me came alongside them and helped them plant Back in 2017, this was the goal of Resonate Church. It wasn't to just have incredible Sunday services, head home and wait for the next Sunday service. Our goal was to create a church that lived outside the four walls of this building all throughout the week from Monday to Saturday. In fact, we, we, we wanted it to be, to be this. We, we said this. We said that we want the church, if we were to ever shut the doors... Like, shut their doors on a Sunday service. Would anybody notice? We asked that question of ourselves. Would anybody notice that we were gone other than the people that attended on a Sunday? And I can tell you, church, because of your faithful giving and your faithful generosity, every single week we are in our community making a difference. So when we ask ourselves that question now, would anybody notice that we're gone? You know what? There's families that would notice that we're gone. There's people in our neighborhoods that would notice that something was missing because you've shown up in a season of pain, in a season of heartache, in a pandemic. You've showed up faithful to look outside of yourselves and reach towards others. So God, today as we give, thank you that our lives are not lived for ourselves, but they're lived for somebody else, God. That's why we exist. That's why we're still here on the planet. It's to make a difference. Thank you for every single person at Resonate Church. Their faithful giving God. Take what we give today, the little and the much, and make a difference with it in our city, in our nation, and around the world. This week we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, someone said a good amen and amen. Well, church family, we love you so much. 1 p.m. today, online registration for next